What are some of the differences between 2K21 and 2K23? That is the question that we are going to ask today. Differences in animations, in graphics, you're going to see some ball flights, interaction with the ground, with the ball, the way the ball rolls out, spin. Right off the get-go, just looking at footage, you may be like, ah, there's not really anything different, but... When you actually sit down and compare the two, there are quite a few differences. I'm not going to even be able to go over them all in today's video. It'll be split up into a couple of videos so that this video doesn't begin to be, I don't know, two hours long. But I want to take you through three holes just so you can see the difference just with three holes of golf between 2K21 and 2K23. So I wanted to start off with a very big change that happens the first time you log into the game, and that is just the overall menus. So, I mean, you've seen a lot of the menus for 2K23 in my videos, but I just want to show like how much of an improvement this is over what we had in 2K21. And my biggest gripe about the menus in 2K21 were they were just boring. And this is what you had. Gray on gray on gray. I'm white, some information there, your golfer, the tees and everything you're playing on. But overall, I would say it's very bland and kind of boring, I would say. Fast forward to 2K23, and there's definitely a difference here. It's a lot more color for one, but there's a lot more information on the onset. And I do like what they've done to kind of immerse yourself into the menus just a touch i would like to see additional stances that your golfers have except for this one i will say that stance compared to what you have in 2k21 i like the 2k21 better honestly club down waving you know i kind of like that so i'd like to see maybe some additional um, stances added in but overall the menus in their entirety, every menu that you go into when you load up this game is very, very well done compared to what we had in 2K21, which makes, if you are surfing through the menus, not as monotonous, gray, boring. So I think the art team did a really good job just on the overall upgrades to the menus. All right, so now I just want to take you through a couple of clips. Uh, the first one is going to be of 2K21. The second one will be of 2K23. And it's just the ambient, you're sitting still, and this is what you get. So I'm just going to play them so you guys can see them back to back. And then I'll put them side by side and, and we'll talk about them. So starting on 2K21, just the overall layout of everything they did a really good job coming from 2019 to 2k21 to streamline everything to make everything more compact so that you can take in the game more than the ui that you get so in 2k23 they've made the ui a little bit more streamlined in some instances but in other instances i think that the ui definitely takes up a little bit more real estate but for the most part ui and everything is improved so as you can see, like you have your score, your name, what hole you're on, the par. You have your wind meter at the top and in the top right, you have, you know, where you're at, the tee box, the driver, what kind of swing you're doing and the yardage. And then you have, of course, your tempo at the bottom. You have your power bar. The thing I really liked about the power bar in 2K21, if you used it, I mean, I usually turn it off, but if you used it, very minimal, hardly took up any room. It was just kind of out of the way. Now, doing it that way made it so you're actually staring at the power bar instead of your actual golfer, so there are definitely trade-offs. Now, if we come over to 2K23, the actual name, hole, what par, everything is relatively unchanged, but they have combined a bunch of things together. So the wind meter is now combined into one single UI element instead of having a circle and a couple of things coming off the sides. It's now combined in so it's again streamlined top right again more information crammed into one exact location so instead of having everything kind of spread out a little bit within the ui window more things are packed in 
and it gives you the same amount of information with less intrusion of the UI. Now, the big change is the power bar now. So again, these are the trade-offs. So the power bar, a lot more intrusive to the actual gameplay itself. However, you are now visualizing the swing of your golfer, which makes it more intrus intrusive, but also makes you focus on your actual golfer and instead of just staring at the bottom of your screen if you were to use power bar. The Temple region has been blown up, which is great. I think that that should usually always be the biggest thing on the screen for UI because it is the most important thing about the UI. So blowing that up, making it easier to read, making it easier to see are all welcomed additions. Now, talking about graphics overall, the lighting model first and foremost has definitely been updated. Shadows are a lot less jagged. They're a lot more clean. Uh, both of these are on ultra everything. Also ultra everything, max quality. Uh, I did that just for the sake of this. Now, YouTube will compress this, of course, but you'll be able to see the differences either way. But one thing I noticed that is very interesting with the differences between 2K21 and 2K23, in 2K21, it actually renders farther distances a lot better. So if you look just above the yardage marker, the trees and everything further down have actually rendered in a lot better than they have on 2K23. But there is a trade-off. In 2K21, closer rendering is actually a lot worse. It leads to very blocky looking trees, like you can see on the right side of the screen in 2K21. It's like they're very blocky trees. They haven't rendered in that great. And it could also just be the assets, because the assets in 2K23, a lot of them have been updated. I would say almost all of them have been updated that I have seen. They've gave things a lot more volume as well. Whereas 2K21, it's like leaves, nothing, leaves, nothing, leaves. But in 2K23, everything has a lot more volume and closer rendering is a lot better. There's a lot more detail to everything on the screen, except for, for whatever reason, long distance rendering. Now that could just be early preview build as well, but everything you see on the screen Comparatively, to me, just looking with my own eyes, looks a lot better. Ambient sound is also quite a bit different for 2K21 to 2K23. In 2K21, they gave you more ambient nature noises, less crowd. And when you have bigger crowds, yes, around the golfer will usually be as quiet as it can be, but there usually is still a slight rumbling of a crowd, either on the outskirts of, of the crowd or at other holes. And you get, you pick up more of that ambient crowd noise just sitting here. So in 2K21, you can hear a lot more nature. A lot of nature, not a ton of crowd. But if you go over to 2K23, they've they've changed the audio up to give you more of the crowd, less of the nature, I would say. And you can always turn the crowds off, too. You definitely hear more of the rumblings of the crowd. Subtle change, but a change nonetheless. Golfer animations have also changed while addressing the ball. Uh, the golfer will actually look down where they're hitting to, like you probably would in real life. Look at your target, look at your target, swing the club. Whereas 2K21, very robotic, sitting in place, not really doing much. 2K23, you have a little bit more movement, a little more bounce in the settled, you know, getting ready to swing, the approach of your golfer compared to 2K21. Now, a big thing that I want to do is just show you the differences in tempo and accuracy for every setting, because it is a huge difference uh, compared between each other. So we're just going to scroll through these really quick just so I can I can show you what they've done and you know what has changed. I tried to match clubs and attributes between the two to the best of my ability. There is going to be some differences because in the end you're you are slightly guessing at what the attributes are for each, but the picture is still painted of the differences between the two. So on the left, you have 2K21. On the right, you have 2K23. This is beginner. So everything is tightened up except for the gray zones. The gray zones take up the majority 
I would say, of the swing plane and tempo. But the perfect region has still been tightened up. So for beginner, even, getting the perfect tempo, I mean, is still easier, of course. But it's not going to punish you as much if you don't get that perfect because the gray zones are so big. This is amateur, again, huge difference. So the accuracy line's still a little bit smaller. The perfect tempo is smaller, but again, the gray regions, so the slight misses for tempo and accuracy are much, 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 much bigger. This is Pro-Am. So they're starting to tighten up a little bit. Pro-Am, I would say, is actually probably the closest comparison between 2K21 and 2K23. The gray zones are still bigger, but the perfect tempo, region, and accuracy are, I would say, comparable. But again, just bigger, slight miss regions. One thing I never realized, but this is Pro-Am. This is Pro. Pro-Am, Pro. Like... That is hardly any difference at all between the two for PGA 2K21, which I find crazy, but something I never realized. Now, compared to 2K23, there's quite a, I would say, a, a decent jump from Pro-Am to Pro. Um, probably one of the biggest jumps from the beginners to as you're starting to move into the online and societies and two TGC tour rounds and stuff like that. So uh, on pro, big difference. Again, more gray zone, but the perfect tempo is really starting to tighten up once you start on pro, which is good because this is probably what online is going to be. If I had to guess, um, this is what online is going to be. Now, before we go to master, one thing that I, I said is master in 2K21 always felt like such a gigantic leap from pro to master. There needed to be something in between. Now, I would have liked maybe another difficulty added, but what they've done between the pro and the master, comparatively, between 2K21 and 2K23, I think gives that in between very nicely. So this is master. Again, tempo, small. Accuracy line, small. Gray regions, though, the slight misses, much, 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 much bigger. Like, if you look at the difference on the left between pro, pro, master, pro, master, huge jump. There was a gigantic leap. I always thought that the leap should happen on legend, not from pro to master. There should always be something in between, and they have tuned that nicely, I think, for 2K23. Still difficult to hit that perfect zone. The accuracy line is much smaller, but the still, the gray zones, much wider. Makes those slight misses not as punishing as they were in 2K21. Now, the big difference comes with the legend, which I like. There's master, there's legend. Now, gray zone for 2K23 is comparable to master for legend. Uh, but now to get a perfect tempo during the legend rounds, you, you don't get a lot of them because that is such a small timing window for it that you are going to miss your tempo quite a bit comparatively to 2K21. But I think that that just makes it that more fun to play a legend round. And I like how big of a jump it is between master and legend. Whereas in 2K21, that jump wasn't as extreme. I like that they've kind of evened out pro and master, made a significant jump for legend i i would even go to say it could even be a little bit harder on the gray zones personally i think but it's still it's a good balance comparatively where 2k21 a slight miss is could have been a, a red fast or a red slow and that swing is wasted whereas you have a little bit more wiggle room with 2k23 which i think plays nicely as long as that dispersion is there i think it's lacking a touch with the preview build that i had but overall a tuning away now I want to play some swings for you back to back so you can see the difference in swing. We'll start with 2K21 and then we'll move on to 2K23 and we'll compare them again.
So if we just start with the stance, a lot more athletic of a stance. 2K21 always felt robo robotic to me. They made progress from 2019. 2019 to 2K21, I thought was a big step, and I think that they've done another big step here in 2K23. They've made it less robotic, and I would say more athletic. So instead of in 2K21, where you're just kind of, he looks like he's slouched over, a lot more arch in 2K23, addressing the ball a lot better. And as we go through the swing, the animation of the swing in its entirety is a lot more smooth, which in turn makes the swing change for tempo from 2K21. What I mean by that, in 2K21, those who have played a lot know that most of your swings, you're kind of pausing slightly at the top instead of making it a very smooth swing. In 2K23, the movement of everything is a lot more smooth for your tempo, I found. I had a lot more success being smooth with my tempo. Because this year, when you when you kind of do that slight pause at the top, instead of getting like the 100, 101s that you got in 2K21, you're getting more 103, 102, 103, 104, which in turn shrinks your accuracy, your tempo, all of it, which leads to more errant hits, misses, at, at, I guess, misses. One thing, though, that I will give feedback on for 2K23 is the power bar starts up like it, you, it gets through like 20% of the swing before the club moves. And that happens in putting, chipping, pitching, driving every every single swing you take the power actually ramps up before the club even moves and that threw me off a ton when i got into my rounds because without using the power bar you're looking at animation and for me going off feedback for vibration is too so both of them work in tandem so if that animation isn't starting when the power starts to ramp up it throws you off a lot. I got used to it the more I played, but it was still, it, it, it just, it needs to either start with the animation, power needs to ramp up slower. I, I'm not sure what the solution is, but you'll see it here. Like uh, 2K21, power is going, club is moving. Uh, in 2K23, right there is the first time you see your golfer move and you're already ramping up on power. So again, it kind of throws you off a little bit as you're playing. Got used to it. I would like to see that changed, though. Overall, although everything about the swing is just so much better. Weight's transferring a lot better. The actual swing comes out nicely. Great extension at the top compared to where the club is kind of bowed out a touch. And again, just a more athletic swing in its entirety. Now, a big thing between 2019 and 2K21 was... There was this always this weird hitch at the top of the swing where 2019 you would the, the whole entire animation would hitch and it was very noticeable the more you played in 2K21. They made that better, um, but in 2K23, it's almost completely removed, especially at fast speed. So like 2K23 smooth transition 2K21, you have that weird hitch at the top of the swing and then it comes through again. Weight transfer is great. Swinging through the ball, 2K21, it hops frames a lot, like balls hit, but a frame ago, the club hadn't even hit the ball yet. And another thing with 2K21, just overall swing, like elbows bent almost instantly. There wasn't a lot of like, there wasn't, it wasn't the greatest of follow throughs, whereas 2K23, everything stays a lot more extended, straightened, follow through is a lot better. He's actually, his weight has been distributed where he's a little bit more over the ball, hitting up on it. Whereas in like 2K21, he just kind of stood straight up. Uh, just everything about the swing is just so much better. The follow through, extension, backswing, everything is a lot smoother. And I mean, comparatively to both, when you see him side by side at full speed, it just, it looks so much better. Now, past the swing, ball flights have changed substantially. I don't know which video I talk about it in, but I have, I've tried, I tried to dig like three irons, four irons out of bunkers, kind of like how you could in 2K21 with lips, but man, trajectories off the club have just changed a lot. 
Uh, and you'll see that in a future video I'm going to be doing kind of comparing ball flights and spin for each club. But you can it, it you you see it here. Like driver comes out a lot flatter and kind of rises up. Whereas in 2K21, I mean, it it peaked so quickly to the top of its trajectory that what ended up happening is sometimes, especially I'm playing everything on firm, firm, fast uh, here. You would get where it'd come down and take a big bounce, but not really roll out as much. Whereas in 2K23, everything's a little bit shallower. It still reaches a, a good top distance, but the overall flight path has been... It ramps up, it starts really low, ramps up, and it instead of coming a little bit more down like it did with drives, you get a little bit more of a flatter arc, which gives you less of a bounce and more of a rollout. Even here, like there, there is differences. It is slight, but it's enough to change the outcome of the ball once it actually strikes the ground. So if you play this through, I can just see it's 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 a little bit flattened out comparatively. 2K21, it comes down very steep, takes a big old bounce, and then just kind of rolls out. Whereas 2K23, it's a lot flatter, doesn't take as big of an initial bounce, and actually rolls out a little bit more because it's carrying that speed a lot better. And you get, I mean, what is that? Like, an, I think it was an additional like four yards off of the drive. All right, next up, I wanted to show you just how the balls roll differently on the putting surface, just to give you an idea of how different it is. So we're going to play these out. 2K21 first, 2K23 second. Now, one thing I wanted to show is just show you what I mean by the animation again. Like, watch the power ramp up on this putter. Ramping up, ramping up, ramping up, ramping up, ramping up. That's when you get movement. Like I said, it just threw me off a little bit. It needs to be matched up just a little bit better. Uh, just to kind of avoid avoid those those mishaps. Especially, it, it, uh, it feels stabby. Well, it looks very stabby. Uh, and what I mean by that is it looks like you're really, like, on short putts. It looks like you're pulling it back just a little bit and like stabbing at the ball, like making a huge, like a, a very short stabby swing instead of a, a fluid swing. Um, and that's due to this power ramps up. And for those short putts, it, it, the animation, you're barely even moving the animation. It's like you're barely pulling it back and just like slamming through it. And it looks very punchy, like you're punching the ball or stabbing it instead of a nice, smooth motion. Um, so it's definitely something I would like to see addressed, even now, I don't know, something either before the game comes out or through a tuning, something. It, it, it feels kind of like 2K21 before they, they tuned the putting, um, or it's very quick, punchy. It, it kind of seems like that. So I, I'm guessing it's just like a tuning away from something. But it really shows when you're not using the power bar. Here we get a little bit better of a look at some of the assets. I would say the crowd is fairly unchanged. During my time, I would say that the crowd was a had a little bit more to them and they were a little bit more active and a little bit more reactive. They gave a little bit bigger of a pop when things happened on the course. Overall, though, like the character models, I would say they're fairly unchanged, but you can see some of the assets are changed a lot. Like the tree off to the left, again, blocky, not a lot to it. Whereas the trees in 2K23, a lot more volume. They look more like trees. The detail is a lot better. It's not as blocky. And overall, it just renders in a lot better. And again, this is for every asset. Every asset has been updated. So those designers out there, you're probably when you if you if you can, if you can't port things over, that would shock me. But when you do port things over, you may have a little work to do because of the changes in assets, especially for those who like to bury trees and bushes and stuff. I'm sure you're going to have you're going to have some changes, but for the actual shot, technically, 2K23, this green that you're seeing, is slower than 2K21. 2K21, 163. 2K23, 155. So the greens are actually slower here. But if you actually watch the ball roll, I'm hitting it in a fairly similar putt path. I wanted to, I had to change the distance up a little bit, but I wanted to hit it in a similar putt path 
just so you can see the difference. I tried to aim them in the same exact spot to the best of my ability. I'm hitting the on the left a little bit harder, but again, the greens are a lot stickier in 2K21. So in 2K23, and this is also weird, 2K21's putter animation and ramp up of power is actually faster than in 2K23. But for 2K23, because of the power ramping up and the animation not starting, it felt so much faster, which is very interesting. It's why both of those things work in tandem, animation and also vibration. But overall, the, the, the putting animation and power ramp up is faster in 2K21, which I found interesting. But the big thing that you'll see is in 2K21, even on faster greens, not as much break for one, and also so much stickier. You'll notice the difference when you're playing 2K23 about how the balls roll out. I have I probably bring it up in every single one of my videos, but holy cow, it is it just feels so much better comparatively to 2K21. Again, these are technically on slower greens. 2K21, already done. It has stopped. 2K23 rolls an additional, what, four or five feet? It breaks a little bit more. It rolls an additional four or five feet. And then it comes to settle. Now, feedback, feedback that I would give. When I have a big putt, I actually do kind of what 2k21 does he's hunched over like the hunchback in notre dame but i do i'll i'll sit in my putting stroke and just watch that ball just like come on come on and that's something that 2k21 actually did a really good job on where like if you come up just short he'd like he'd kind of like sit down in his stance and look really good where 2k23 it kind of takes the same route as like a drive or an iron shot where it's kind of like, all right, let's twirl the club and let's watch this thing fly. Where, I don't know, you just don't really do that. At least I don't in golf. I usually don't put the ball and then just like turn my body and watch it. I usually sit kind of how 2K21 is, where you're just kind of like sitting there. And you're just watching like, is it going to go? Is it not going to go? Whereas 2K23, you're just kind of like awkwardly <laughs> standing here. I don't know. It's just, uh, I don't know. It looks, it looks awkward to me. I would like to see him maybe sit in your actual putting animation, putting stance, because I mean, that's what I think every golfer does. And if you miss it, you're like, oh, you know, but if you make it, that's when you react to it. Whereas here, not so much, but ball roll, putt, distancing, break, all much, 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 much better in 2K23. You'll notice the difference as soon as you load it up and start playing rounds. It just feels so much better. So this will be a really quick one. This is just, I wanted to show you all ball flight again. And this shot's a lot better of a reference for how ball flight has changed. Uh, but this is a fully drawed ball. I'm going to show you 2K21. And I'm going to show you 2K23. I would say don't look at the actual swing itself. They still don't model in their swing animations what the golfer does for draws and fades. It is still just the same swing animation. So I wouldn't focus too much on that because it's not changed. It's still the same swing animation. But I do want to use this as reference for ball flight and rollout for both drives running the same max draw. So we're going to run 2K21. 2k23 and then i just want to run them side by side for you as well So as we run through this, you see it's the it, same same swing animation that hasn't changed. But if you just play this through and look at the trajectory of these balls. So at about the same part of the path. Here is 2K23 compared to this tree right here. You can already see flight paths have been they've just been flattened so much, which gives you a lot more realistic of a drive path. Um, look at the, it's, it had, I don't even think it's reached the top yet. There it's at its top. 2K23, it's still rising slightly, but overall 
much, much, much better. Now this one's finally started its descent. This one's kind of just flattened out. Now it's begun its descent. But as you run through this, like you'll see. So this one drops in at about 270. So we're coming in here on both. Again, a lot more steep on the left side for 2K21. Takes a huge high bounce. You can still take a big bounce. This takes a very high bounce. Whereas 2K23, it's a lot flatter of a bounce. And instead of taking that high bounce and losing all of its momentum and coming to rest a lot sooner, in 2K23, the ball rolls out so much more that you end up getting about six yards extra on the initial bounce and the rollout after for each which makes it so you just hit a little bit further drives and i mean that's that's across the board for all drives no matter the conditions it's just a little bit flatter looks a little bit better trajectories are a lot better ball flights a lot better which leads to more realistic outcomes for a driver. Now, I would like to see, because on soft fairway conditions, you still get quite a decent bounce and rollout from your drive. I would like to see, you know, that be negated a little bit. Like if you're actually playing in a lot softer of conditions where that ball comes to rest a lot faster. Overall, ball flights and, and the way that the ball reacts to the actual fairway is very good. Now, next up, I'm using a gap wedge. There is slight differences in the wedges between 2K21 and 2K23, but I try to hit almost the same exact shot for both, just so I can show the reaction to the green from the ball and the spin that you get out of just this gap wedge. So I'm gonna play these both out, again, 2K21 and then 2K23, and then they'll be side by side. So again, slight differences between the two. Distance for one, I'm a little bit closer on the 2K23 shot, but this is a fully lofted gap wedge for both. I do slight slow on 2K23. That was kind of an unfortunate thing. Just, I should have turned the tempo off. I don't know why I did, didn't, but just to go over, just at the offset. First off, when I was going through this, I'm like, you know what I never noticed? Why am I addressing the ball in 2K21 like I'm using a five wood? Like, he is so far away from the ball. It, it it looks like I am using a wood, but instead, I'm using a wedge. That's a gap wedge. That's the initial address of the ball with a gap wedge. 2K23, a lot more impact, a lot more but over the ball, which is how you're going to be with your shorter irons and shorter wedges. So first, right off the rip, tons better. They've gone through and updated a lot of the stances. I think all of them. I think they've updated all the stances, except for maybe the putter. Putter, I haven't really done anything with, but I mean, a putter's a putter. But overall, like they've, they've gone through and redone the stances to match more accurately for what you're going to have on the actual golf course. But I was surprised going through here. I'm like, why am I addressing? Why is the ball so far away? That's, that's crazy. It's like, yeah, it's like a, yeah, an eight wood, you know, not a gap wedge. But anyways, as we go through this, again, fully lofted gap wedge is what we're using here. Swing, a lot smoother. You get through it faster. It's a lot more compact in 2K23. It gets through. Nice, good-sized divot there. And again, ball flights. Ball flights, ball flights, ball flights are huge. So like here, this is the top of the ball flight for this gap wedge. And if you use the, the golfer as a model, like this is it. That's it for the golf, the, the, the lot or the gap wedge for 2K23. 2K21, it's still, it's still rising. It is still going up. It has finally <laughs> started its descent. It's just so much, so, so, so much higher, which is why you're able to dig three irons out of bunkers with lips. 
because the ball came out so steep and gained so much height comparatively to what you were actually able to do on the golf course. World of difference. So now the ball has begun coming into the green. Again, it's a little bit more of a shallowed path of flight. So what that ends up entailing is a lot more realistic reactions to the green. It's still going to take a pretty big bounce, but it's a lot more shallow because it is shallow to begin with. Uh, and because of that, it actually allows it to not lose a bunch of its momentum and keep the spin going after its second touchdown. So, I mean, the difference, I mean, look at the left. Huge initial bounce, whereas the right... A lot more shallow, a lot shorter of a bounce which allows it to create spin a lot faster which in turn i mean makes this thing spin out by a lot comparatively whereas 2k21 that spin it comes back but it kind of dies out in 2k23 that ball just keeps on a rolling And again, showing that ball roll, the ball roll, like down the slope, it's just, it's, it's so much more realistic, especially in down slopes. For our last shot, we just have an eight iron coming in, just again to show the ball flight, show how quickly balls get down. Uh, and also I want to show just what they've done with overall lighting and, and reflections. Whereas like 2K21, everything is very muddled off of reflection. The lighting kind of blows out a little bit too in 2k23 it's a lot more tight reflections can actually be kind of seen a little bit better uh off the water just overall graphical fidelity is definitely up overall along water reflections shadowing lighting all of it uh but again i just want to showcase showcase ball flight because it's just it's changed quite dramatically so first one 2k21 2k23 and then we'll look at them side by side So just to go over what I was kind of stating there, like overall refle reflections, I mean, you can't really see anything. It just looks like it's a little bit darker water. The light's kind of blowing out the water in its entirety. Shadows are casting from the trees, but overall it just kind of looks like a, a muddied mess, I would say. Uh, I think it's still, personally, I think it still looks good. But in 2K23, you can kind of see actual reflections coming through of the trees. They're actually casting onto the water through the reflection. Shadows are coming in a lot nicer. Um, the water just looks a little bit more realistic, um, especially in a no wind instance. Like for this, no wind, the water is extremely calm. Whereas here, there's no wind, but the water is not calm at all. It still looks like there is a breeze rolling through. Um, the water reacts to its overall environment uh, a lot better. Reflections come through a lot better. And the light isn't blowing out the lake and the reflections in its entirety. Overall, it just looks it just looks a lot better. Putting them side by side, again, the address of the ball is, is, is a lot be better comparatively between the two. Just to kind of showcase that again. Overall graphics and lighting and shadowing. I mean, everything just looks a, a little bit more clean the shadow in 2k21 is a little bit more muddy whereas 2k23 it's a lot more crisp firm graphics look better this time it actually renders in the further away trees a lot better than 2k21 so that's quite interesting but again the big thing is just the overall flight path again <laughs> the swing in 2k21 it's so robotic that kind of reminds me of what do you do if you were like i don't know trying to draw the ball the overall swing is just so much better in 2K23. It's actually amazing how much better it is. The big thing is though, again, ball flight. This is a straight, this is a straight eight iron that we're taking out here. Much shallower off the get-go. Comparatively, like, dude, in, in 2K21, those I guess I never realized just how quickly balls reached their apex on, on 2K21. So the eight iron is still rising. And it's finally begun its descent. And again, just the differences in how shallowed out 
Like, if we just go straight over... Everything has been shallowed out a lot better. This is a stock 8-iron, too. I didn't loft it. I didn't do anything to it. It's a lot more shallow and just a lot more realistic looking. And I mean, that's it. I just wanted to show you guys three holes and the differences that I saw. Is this all the differences? No. I would like to do differences of like chipping, spins for the different balls, spins for the different builds, things of that nature. I'd like to get a lot more into the weeds, but overall, just in three holes, like there are visible differences between 2K21 and 2K23. All differences that I think are for the better of the game. It leads to better gameplay. It leads to a better looking game, a more appealing game, and a more true to life game. I will have a video coming out just to show you what spin looks like comparatively between 2K21 and 2K23. I went to the range. I hit everything from a three wood down to a pitching lob wedge. Just so you could see what the spin looks like when you max it out between the two. But I just wanted to give you, <laughs> I was going to say a quick comparison between 2K21 and 2K23. I know this video is probably going to be fairly long, but I just wanted to show you the differences that I spotted. There are more, a lot more between the two versions that hopefully you'll be able to see throughout the course of all the videos that I'm going to be putting out. And also, if you choose to get the game, you'll be able to see them yourself when you go out and play your first couple of rounds. But that's it. Just wanted to show you this. If this is something that you enjoyed, I'd greatly appreciate if you left a like on the video. Helps the algorithm out. Helps the video out, helps my channel out, helps me out, and I greatly appreciate it. Sub to the channel for more 2K23 content. More to come before the game launches, and when the game launches, oh, I am going to hit you guys with all of the juicy content. So if you're interested in that, think about subscribing to the channel. Comment down below. Maybe I missed something during these, like, frame-by-frame side-by-sides. Is there something that you spotted that I didn't catch? What are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments below. But well, thank you for stopping by. Have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. I will catch you on the next one. Well, that was a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. <laughs>